Hello everybody. Feedback is that it's quite useful that I hang on the first page just for a bit because then people can see uh, when they're watching on replay what you needed. Also, I'm going to do that because I actually need to gather this stuff because I only just finished Lego Star Time Show. <laughs> so I'm just going to race around, maybe at the same time as you race around, gathering things that I need for this episode. Okay, baking tray. That's just because we're hanging paper over fire. Candle. Way of lighting it. Uh, scissors. Caution fed. Oh, yeah, bowl of water. Got my cotton thread. Scissors, yes, paint right. Oh, bowl of water and paper. Okay, I will be back. There. Surrounded by Lego. That goes there. And that goes there. Okay, I am flipping you, good people. Oh, stuck on a stuck on a chair. Okay. There's a wall here from story time. Okay. Right. Now I am flipping you. Oh, you see, I faff and more people gather. That's how it works. That's why I faff. Right. Uh pew. Oh, hello Science Alliance, hello my IGCSEers. Right, very exciting because it's the start of a whole new year. It's our second year of IGCSE physics. It's all a bit of an experiment, this. I have taught IGCSE physics in secondary schools before at classrooms and people where I could see their worried, joyous little faces. Um, this is my second year of this experiment where I try and teach it online. I'm having a good time, hopefully you will too. Um, it doesn't matter if you didn't come to any lessons last year because we're starting a whole new month, so I just ran up the stairs to get some stuff from the printer. I'm absolutely shattered. My job is just sitting down now. Um, yeah, we're starting a whole new module. We have done already, we cut, there's two different exam boards that could write an IGCSE physics exam. And we're covering everything that is on both of their specifications, the big list of things you need to know. But we're going in the order of the Edexcel one. So we've done forces, and we've done electricity and we've done waves and this is the energy topic and after this one there's only four more left and then we know everything right so let's just start with energy um it's such an annoying teacher question because uh because it's really obvious that i've got something in my head and i'm just asking you to guess what's in my head but my starter question for you to get your brains working is what have energy and happiness got in common what have energy and happiness got in common? I reckon an Ofsted inspector would be quite happy with this question because if you don't know anything about energy or if you've got like A-level physics, you could still answer this question. And as a teacher, it's a good way of like getting your brains working and finding out who knows what already about energy. What have energy and happiness got in common? I will actually, I'm not good at it. I will be silent for 10 seconds. Go on, say some things out loud. You can even write some things down if you want.
You got something? You got a few things? People uh, in the Facebook lesson I did yesterday where there were comments were saying so things like um, they both release feelings of, of warmth. A lot of people going to warmth relate to energy and relate to happiness. Um, the thing, the guess what's in my head answer is I think they're quite similar because like happiness is real, right? No one's going to say that happiness isn't real. It can even be measured. You could say to someone, how happy are you feeling on a scale of one to 10? But you can't hold happiness in your hand, can you? It's not a physical thing and energy is the same. I have got, as always, there is a post on my Facebook page right now. If you're watching live, then you can go over to Facebook and put some answers in uh, the post at the top of Facebook and then I can read them at the end of the lesson. Um, so sorry, yeah, otherwise it's just gonna be me talking at you and I won't get to hear what's in your brain. So a good place to start, I think, with energy, something that you need to know, whatever exam board you're doing, is something called the principle of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. You, you can't just make energy and you can't get rid of it, but it can be transferred from one store to the other. So you can store energy, I guess just like happiness is kind of can be in a person. You can, you can store energy and you can transfer it from place to place, much like happiness. We're not talking about happiness, this is less about uh, energy. So <clears throat> if you brought a can of food with you, which I suggested you might want to do, you might be able to find on there what energy is measured in. I'm just gonna tell you. It's measured in joules. Now you gotta be careful here. Joules is spelled J-O-U-L-E-S, named after Mr. Joule, who did a lot of work with energy. If you write the whole word, you use a little j. But if you're writing an answer like, oh, I think the answer is 10 joules of energy, then like the unit for energy is a, a capital J, right? So small j if you're writing it out, capital J if you're using it in an answer with a number on the end. Get a can of food, can you, you'll see. I'm not making this stuff up. It actually says energy and then Fair enough, there's a K in the front, probably, uh, because just like a kilometre is 1,000, you can't see that. Just like a kilometre is 1,000 metres, a kilojoule is 1,000 joules. But for real, look, you got a can of food? Got my trusty beans here. Energy, energy measured in joules, yeah? Kilojoules, little K, capital J, don't worry about the calories, but yeah, there you go. So energy is measured in joules. Humans have put a number on how much energy is stored in things. And this was melting people's brains a little bit on Facebook yesterday. Um, I will send you some links later on to websites that where you can read through in your own time if, you're, if you struggle with this. But physicists and scientists say that energy can only be stored in a a certain amount of different ways. We're gonna focus on, on the chemical because food is a store of, it's a, a chemical store. So the energy in this food, in these beans, is uh, what you would call a chemical store of energy. A chemical store of energy, uh, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory, it? it's like a chemical reaction happens and energy is released. If a, if a chemical reaction happens and energy released, then that is energy which was stored in a chemical store. So when you put these beans in your body, then you empty the chemical store from the food, but you fill up your body's chemical store. So your body is also a chemical store of energy, right? Chemical reactions happen with the teeny tiny little bits of food stored in your body, and they release energy. So those are two chemical stores. A battery is also a chemical store. You might think it's like electricity, but an actual battery is there's no electricity flowing, is there? We've done my electricity lessons. A battery is just a chemical store waiting for reactions to happen so that the energy can be released. Um, so you filled up your chemical store of energy, right? The chemical store of the food is empty. Your body's chemical store is being filled. Where does that energy go? Where's, where's, where does that energy go? We've said energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. So you don't get your energy from nowhere, we get our energy from food. And once you've eaten it, that energy can't just disappear. It actually fills up more different chemical stores that may be listed here. I have kinetic here, which is a posh word for uh, movement. Sounds weird, doesn't it? But movement is like a, an energy store. I'll put movement here. Kinetic energy store, movement energy store, same thing. Uh, internal is another way of saying thermal, it's kind of another way of saying heat. 
I'm giving you massive clues here, people. Elastic will come to, uh, these are the ones we'll come to. Where does your energy go once you eat it? Well, it fills up um, a thermal store of energy because you are a mammal, so your body needs to use a lot of energy to keep warm all the time. So constantly, oh, it must be exhausted, constantly your body is emptying your chemical store, chemical reactions are happening and releasing energy and filling what we call a thermal store. This language might seem a bit weird, but we will be talking about this for like the next seven lessons, so don't worry if this, this is feeling like a lot. Um, your body is warm, so that would be an internal or thermal energy store. We could say heat for now, thermal is better. But your body is heating up the air, okay? So you're also filling up the thermal store of the air around you. And you're also moving. So you could say that you've got a, like a kinetic energy store as well. The chemical the store, that energy has been shifted into movement. Even if you just it puts it perfectly still though, you're still, you're still using up energy, but ultimately that energy is going into heating the air. That's quite often what happens. Like if you, if you talk about machines that are using a lot of energy, the ear, gears are like grinding together. Where that energy is going is it's heating up the air particles around it and then what we call like spreading out, dissipating into the air. More of that in a few lessons time. <sighs> that was quite a lot of talking from me. Can you go on a little mission for me, please? I want you to go and get two things from around your house. I am going to do it too. <laughs> I don't feel like I need to move around more. But please go and get these pens. Please, there we go. Please get something elastic for me. Doesn't matter what it is. I can't see you. Could be a pair of pants. Could be a hair bubble. Could be a hair band or an elastic band. Get something elastic, please. And can you please get as well a pen or a, a pencil that will stand up on its own? That can like stand up, you know what I mean? Like balance. That you can you can balance. You know what I mean? A pen or a pencil that can stand up on its own and something elastic. <sighs> right, I'm gonna go to. Come on, we can do this. It's good. It's a again, it's like the offset inspector would love this. It's good to get moving around. It helps our brains. Something elastic. Um, oh, here we go, come on. Uh, pencil that can stand up on its own. I mean, I only did this lesson yesterday. Why is this so hard? Why are the things not still here? Pen that can stand up on its own. No! Yes, it will if I turn it upside down. Whew! Have you done it? Did you get your things? Right, good, because we need to talk about some other uh, energy stores and then I'm going to give you a quiz. Here we are. So hopefully we, we've covered chemical a little bit. Movement energy. It seems weird that movement is a store of energy, doesn't it? But it, it is. I mean, uh, petrol is a chemical energy store. You put petrol in your car, chemical reaction happen. The petrol empties, doesn't it? So the, the chemical... Uh, energy store you would say like empties and the store of energy that gets filled it's got to go somewhere is the kinetic energy the movement of the car and then if the car like bashes into a wall the energy doesn't just disappear so where does that energy go because there's no movement anymore well it's uh it's ultimately it's it's thermal energy again internal energy the wall would be a, it seems weird but the wall would be a little bit hotter and the air particles around after the collision they would also be a little bit warmer okay Let's move on to elastic. It's hopefully a fairly easy one. If you've managed to find something elastic, then pull it. That's it. You can feel, can't you, that energy is being stored in your elastic thing when you have pulled it. So what store is being emptied here? Where is the energy coming from? So we've, if you pull your elastic band, you have got energy stored in your elastic band. That is an elastic store of energy because it's something that's been sort of stretched, right? Kind of squished somehow changed shape and it's going to go back to its regular shape when we let go. So that is an elastic sort of energy. But where did the energy come from? For us to stretch this elastic band? Our bodies, right? We used up a little bit of our chemical energy. We used up a bit of energy. Uh, so our chemical energy store is a little bit lower than it was before. If we did this all day, we would need to eat some food at the end of the day because we would have, have burned energy right burned up our food emptied our chemical energy store so that's elastic energy 
uh, if you if you empty this door by snapping the elastic thing, then what happens there? Well, uh, you fill up a kinetic energy store, don't you? Because it moves, and then the kinetic energy store empties, and your finger probably feels a bit like hot, and the air around it will be hot as well. Okay, so that's elastic energy. Um, get this pen then. It's a bit of a weird one. Can you balance a pen or a pencil? on the table in front of you, if indeed you are sitting at a table. And then I just want you to really gently brush against it to knock it over. Just as gently as you possibly can. So get a pen balance on the table, just like barely touch it, brush against it and see if you can knock it over. Can you knock, knock the pen over for me? You have to do that for science. Right, you ready? <laughs> You've got to knock it over very gently. There we go. Let's do that again. You notice anything weird about that? <clears throat> do you feel like you're not giving that pen as much energy as you're getting back? It's quite a hard smack on the table, isn't it? If there was some water there, you'd see loads of ripples traveling through the water from, from that pen hitting them. More ripples than you'd see if you just touched the water as gently as you're touching the pen. So what's happening there? Are we winning energy? Have we just made energy from nowhere? Have we? Have we we've somehow like gained some energy in between us brushing the pen and the pen falling. It doesn't feel, does it? Like, obviously you have emptied your chemical energy store a little bit to move your hand, but it doesn't feel like that amount of energy just brushing a pen. That doesn't feel like the same amount of energy as the energy that you get when the pen smacks against the table. Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? Uh, gravitational potential, a store of gravitational potential energy. We get to do some sums in a few lessons time, like a bit of maths, uh, where we'll look at this in more detail. But basically, a gravitational potential energy store is where something has the potential to fall. <laughs> so it has the potential for gravity to act on it. So if I, when you propped that pen up, you, what your chemical energy uh, store did was, it emptied slightly and it gave the pen uh, some, gravitational potential energy. Well, it, a better thing to say was it filled the pen's uh, gravitational potential energy store. Uh, so it was kind of storing energy, even though we kind of didn't know it. And then it doesn't take very much energy to make it fall over. All right? Is that okay? Gravitational potential energy, things that are high have the potential to fall. And as they fall, that gravitational potential energy store is lessened. And uh, it's the kinetic energy store, the movement energy store that is filled because it starts to move. <sighs> that was a lot of talking for me. Let's to give you a little quiz. I do not care at all if you get every single question wrong in this quiz. Um, but hopefully by the end, you'll be like, oh yeah, that makes sense now. So if you do understand it, you can use this to check. And if you don't understand it, you can use this for learning. Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give you some examples of some things. And I want you to tell me, please, <clears throat> what store is being filled and what store is being emptied? Which store is being filled, which store is being emptied? And here are your choices. So I've got more on this list, but we will go through those later. Nuclear, electrostatic, magnetic, we're not going to worry about those yet. You can choose from elastic, chemical, kinetic, which means movement, thermal, no, I mean, it means heat, and gravitational potential. All right, here we go. So for example, walking up a hill, the store that has been filled is a gravitational store, right? You've got the potential to roll down the hill. And the store that's being emptied is a chemical because that was the chemical energy, that's what your body is. Right. So the choices are at the top, elastic, chemical, kinetic, slash movement, thermal or gravitational potential. A catapult being pulled back. Careful, a human pulls back on a catapult. Which store is being filled? And which door is being emptied? Have you got it? The answer that I have is, so the, the store being filled where is the energy going? Where is the energy being stored when a catapult gets pulled back? It's an elastic store of energy, right? 
So you can imagine that catapult not moving at all, but it's got the potential to twang, hasn't it? So that's what a, an elastic store is. So the store that's been emptied, where that energy came from, uh, was the chemical store, which is your body. And the energy got shifted from the chemical store to this elastic store. <clears throat> all right, next one. What about a balloon bursting? If a balloon bursts, what store gets filled? Oh, that's pretty hard, actually. The store that gets emptied is maybe slightly easier. Where is the energy going when a balloon bursts? If there's, if there's really ancient adults in the room like me, they might be saying things like sound energy. Do not listen to them. We've changed how we teach energy. You're not going to, I'm not even going to repeat that because that is not something that will get you a mark now on IGCC. Uh, the store that's being filled, well, I've put kinetic slash thermal. Maybe that's a bit of a fudge because every time air gets moved around, essentially, uh, the air is warming up. So the air around the burst balloon would be ever so slightly warmer. Um, but obviously also the air would would move around a lot. So I've said that like the air's kinetic energy store has been filled and the store that is being emptied is elastic energy, right? So the the elastic, has, if the, the balloon has been stretched and it has the potential to relax again and when it relaxes, that energy's got to go somewhere. By the way, we've got a few more to go, but you need something to do with your hands while you think, can you please get an A4 piece of paper and cut a circle? Doesn't have to be a neat circle. I'm not gonna use any kind of like measuring device. Just get a piece of A4 paper, please, and cut a circle like as big as you can from an A4 piece of paper while I'm asking you the rest of the questions. Okay, there you go, I've already done mine. Just a big circle, doesn't have to be neat. Next one, <clears throat> lifting a cat onto a shelf. If you lift a cat onto a shelf, what's, what energy store is being filled and what energy store is being emptied? So I have that the store that is being filled is a gravitational potential energy store. The cat now has the potential to fall because gravity. And the store that's been emptied, where did the energy come from to get that cat on the shelf? It's the chemical store, isn't it, of your body again. So again, energy constantly getting shifted from your chemical energy store to other things. In this case, it was uh, gravitational potential. This is a tricky one, I think. Hot chocolate cooling down. So hot chocolate, which is cooling down, the hot chocolate is a, an energy store, but obviously it's cooling down, so it's losing energy. But where is that energy going? So the store that is being filled where the energy is going when the hot chocolate cools down is still a thermal store, right? But it's off the air. So the air around the hot chocolate is getting warmer as the hot chocolate is getting cooler. And the store that's been emptied, but that's also thermal, is that okay? The energy is being shifted from the particles of hot chocolate to the particles of air, but they're both thermal energy stores. It's just that the chocolate thermal energy store is getting emptied and the air's thermal energy store is getting filled. Moving on, uh, heating water on a gas stove. What store is getting filled and what store is getting emptied when you heat water on a gas stove? You just heat up water on a stove using gas. Where does the energy come from to heat the water? And what, what energy store is being filled? I'm having a, a panic a little teacher internal panic that I might have put the wrong answers on the sheet. Let's see. <laughs> so the store being filled. Oh, yeah, it's a thermal store. It's not of air, is it? I've got confused and done one for if that water is cooling down, then it would be filling the air. But actually, this is just the water that's heating up. So it would be the thermal energy store, but it's of the water. And the store that has been emptied is chemical because uh, what's happening is gas is reacting with the oxygen and releasing energy. So the gas is a store of chem a chemical energy store. Moving on, so that's embarrassing. 
<clears throat> right, last one. Meteorite falling to Earth. I think I might have used the wrong term here. It's not meteorite, is it, until it gets to Earth. But anyway, this thing falling to Earth from space. What story is getting filled and what story is getting emptied? That's a really tricky one. It's also the last one. That's a really tricky one, though. Well, I've said that the store being filled is thermal. It's obviously heating up. Look at the picture. The air around a meteor is very, very, very hot, right? Um, and the meteor itself is getting very hot as well. In fact, it's burning up. The store being emptied, well, I was like, oh, is it gravitational potential because it's falling? Or is it kinetic because it's moving? And then I thought, oh, yeah, I know what we need. We need a flow diagram, but we'll do more of these next week. So what's actually happening here is... It has gravitational potential energy, doesn't it? Because it's very high up and then gravity starts acting on it and the gravitational potential energy store, as it falls, this is getting emptied and emptied and emptied and the kinetic energy store is filling up, it's moving around and then as it moves, the kinetic energy store is getting, it starts to slow down so that store gets emptied and uh, generates a lot of heat. So it's the thermal store that it's been heated up. So I suppose really you can ignore this bit in the middle and just say the meteorite falling is a gravitational potential store being emptied and the thermal store being filled, but we will do flow diagrams next week, so don't worry too much about it. Right, you got your paper circle. You better have. You don't need to draw a spiral on yours. I've just drawn the spiral to show you how we need to cut. We're going to do the whole hanging a paper snake over a candle thing and seeing what happens. If you've never done it before, that is excellent. I'm glad I get to be the first person. You need to cut a spiral out of uh, your piece of paper. I'm gonna do this now. I, I mean, I wouldn't bother drawing a spiral, uh, but if you're watching this on Catch-Up, of course, you can just pause the video right now and make the perfect spiral. The, the crafting element of theatre science, it always tends to be a little bit rough and sketchy. So I would just get a pair of scissors and just, just cut a rough spiral out of your paper circle if you are watching me live. Don't forget, if you're watching live as well, yeah, you can go over to Facebook and say hello, ask me any questions if this is totally doing your head in. Um, <clears throat> and when, we've, when you've cut out your spiral, you should get something a bit like that hanging. It's a snake. And you need to tie some thread to the top of your snake. If you want to be like posh, you could cut a hole in the snake's head and like hang it through. Yeah, I might do that actually. It does work better if you do that. Ugh, all right then. I'm cutting a little hole in the very top of my snake's head. Sounds awful. And then I'm getting a bit of thread. I'm gonna poke it through the hole and hang my paper snake from a thread. And then I'm gonna do some more chatting so that you can uh, catch up. So if you're watching live, I've possibly gone a bit fast. It's quite hard to thread. There we go. So yeah, what I've said to do is please bring a baking tray Put the whole thing on a baking tray. You've, you need a candle on a baking tray. We're going to light the candle in a minute. And you need a bottle of water nearby because we're gonna hang paper over a flame. And that is a very silly and dangerous thing to do. If you're young, have an adult in the room. Don't be a hero. I often wish that there was another adult in the room when I was teaching these lessons. So I put a hole in the head of my paper snake and right, it started as a circle. I cut it into a spiral. Did you get that? There we go. So you've got a paper circle, cut a spiral out of it, it can be super rough. And then you put a hole in the head and you're hanging it from a string. Let's talk a little bit about candles uh, because there is something that I've missed out in all this talk of chemical stores, just while you're catching up with that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been saying that your body is a chemical energy store. It's not quite right actually. So. A, a, cam a candle is actually a very similar thing. So obviously candle, wax, chemicals, like every particle, really every atom is chemical. Um, so the, the candle is a chemical energy store. When we light the candle, um, you know what I'm doing, I don't have to keep holding that, do I? You know what you're doing, make a paper snake, hang it from some string, yeah? When you light a candle, um, the chemical energy store of the candle gets shifted to a thermal energy store. Is that okay? 
So the, the candle, the chemical reactions happen, the candle burns down and heats up the air around it. Okay, that's where the energy goes. And then that energy uh, dissipates, like spreads out by via the air into the atmosphere. But the candle actually needs something else in order to release its energy. The, the chemicals of the candle, the chemical energy stored of the candle on its own, not enough to release the energy. What else is required? It's the same thing that your body needs to release the energy from your food, if you like biology. It's oxygen. Candles, or an oxygenator, but we'll, we'll say oxygen for now. Um, the food particles in your body, they are reacting with oxygen that you breathe in. So I breathe in oxygen so that it reacts with the food in your body and releases energy. Same thing with the candle, right? So really, I don't, I don't even know if they do this at IGCSE, I'll have to look that up. But strictly speaking, it's um, your body plus oxygen that is a chemical energy store. And it's a candle plus oxygen that is a chemical energy store. Okay, I'm just going to light the candle. <laughs> when I started lighting the candle, when I did this on Facebook yesterday, I got stuck for about 15 minutes talking about matches as well. Because look, if you're using matches like me, you got gunpowder on the top of your match. That's a chemical energy store. Yeah, the, well, the oxygen and the gunpowder are going to react together to release energy. So we've got a chemical energy store. When I scrape it against the matchbox, I use, I empty slightly my chemical energy store to provide the match with kinetic energy because it's moving uh, but that kinetic energy is shifted the friction of it moving against the box that causes that generates heat energy doesn't it like the kinetic energy store is emptied and the thermal energy store of the gunpowder is filled <laughs> that causes the chemical I'm just going to light the candle there we go And when you've got a candle lit and there's adults in the room and you've got some water nearby, then hang your paper snake away above your candle. Don't touch the candle flame with the paper snake and see what happens. Hopefully it'll be good. It didn't actually work very well yesterday on Facebook, but I think that's because I was using uh, wool. So to do a proper test, I suppose I should hold it um, where there is no candle. Yeah, it's still spinning because uh, it's died. It spins! It's a proper beautiful spin. Oh yeah, it does work much better with cotton thread. I think the thinner the thread, the better it works. Oh yeah! As long as it's worked for you guys, that's the main thing. This is the one that's getting saved. I think I've already deleted that Facebook video. <laughs> there, it's spinning! What is happening here? What what chemical energy store is being shifted and what is being filled? Well, we've discussed it a bit, haven't we? chemical energy store of the candle being emptied, thermal energy store of the air being filled, then I think it gets a little bit confusing because the, the snake is spinning because air particles are whacking into it. So is it, is it really the thermal energy store that is emptying and the kinetic energy store that is being filled? I guess it is. I guess it is, isn't it? We will actually, to fully explain this, We'll have to do next week's lesson where we look at uh, pathways, like how energy is shifted from one store to another and flow diagrams and things like that. But yes, it is, it is essentially the kinetic energy of the air particles that is causing the paper snake to go around and around and around. Are you okay with the fact that the snake is also, if it was set on fire, it would also be a chemical energy store. The paper would react with the air to burn. Hopefully that's not happening to any of you. Uh, and that would release energy stored in the paper. So there's energy stored in the paper right now, which can't be released. If you burn it, don't do that. Okay, you're going to stop talking about burning paper and put it down. Oh, right, that is nearly the end of the lesson. You have done extremely well. It's quite a heavy topic, this one, I think. Um, what I did for you, if you can remember, the principle of conservation of energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. Um, I've been on the internet and I've found quotes and headlines from sometimes quite reputable sources who do not understand how this works. So I want you to look at all these clips I've pulled off the internet and tell me they don't make sense on their own, just like odd sentences. Which of these sentences have you got a problem with and why? Some of them are fine and some of them are not really fine from a physics perspective. So these are all clips from real websites. 
Can you spot all the mistakes that have been made when talking about energy? Brackets, some are fine. <clears throat> We've got a sentence that says, energy from trees. People can get energy by burning the scrap wood. <clears throat> Uh, over 100,000 lorry trips per year, taking rubbish to the EFW also means that most black bag rubbish is converted into energy. Most black bag rubbish is converted into energy. Is, have you got a problem with that or is that okay? Plants create energy. How's that? How are you feeling about that sentence? Biomass energy production explained. Biomass feedstocks can be used to create three types of energy. Uh, plants use the energy of the sun to change water and carbon dioxide into a sugar called glucose. Plants make their energy by combining the water with carbon dioxide from blah, blah, blah. Types of waste that can be turned into energy. And the last one, uh, trees capture energy from the sun in chemical reactions. This is the energy that is released when they, when they burn. Which of those are standing out a mile to you as being not very good language to use when talking about energy? with one shoe on what are you thinking well hopefully you are screaming at the screen you can't create energy and you can't destroy it so any talk of creating energy is total bobbins right plants can't make energy can they so we were talking about food obviously beans are plants they are a chemical store of energy where does that energy come from it comes from come on this is pretty straightforward biology this isn't it where do plants get their energy from from the sun. The sun is actually a nuclear store of energy, which we will talk about when we do astronomy in a few modules time. So yeah, any talk of creating energy, I do not like that. Uh, people can get energy by burning the scrap wood. Black bag rubbish is converted into energy. Rubbish converted into energy. Stuff waste being turned into energy. Um, I don't love that either. Oh, forget it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Energy can be shifted from one store to another, right? It's not really correct. You certainly wouldn't get any marks at GCSE for saying, like, plants are turned into energy or rubbish is turned into energy. If we burn paper, we're not turning the paper into energy, are we? We are uh, emptying the paper's chemical energy store and we are filling, like, the thermal store or whatever of the air. Um, so, yeah, it can be shifted between these stores. It can't be made from stuff. Right, that is the end of the lesson, except I'm going to give you some GCSE questions and then I'm going to go over to Facebook and see if anybody has said hello. But very quickly, all right, you've got until I find my second shoe. <laughs> so I'm only wearing one shoe. I've got to go out in 10 minutes. Here are some GCSE questions for you. A tennis ball is hit with a racket. While the ball and the racket are touching, so like picture a split second, the ball and the racket are still, but the ball has got squashed and it's changed shape. State the type of energy stored in the ball. A lot of people getting that wrong on Facebook yesterday. Question two, a person jogs along a path. Complete the sentence. As the person jogs, the energy in their something store decreases. As a person jogs along, the energy in their something store decreases. And question three, energy can be stored. Obvs. Give examples of two ways that energy can be stored.
probably trolling me. One of them has hidden my shoe. How are you getting on? Can we go through the answers? Yeah, a lot of people were talking about like thermal energy for the first question. It's actually elastic. So the tennis ball has changed shape. Um, thermal energy, obviously, of the air is probably a thing. But the, the key was it's what energy is stored in the ball, not around the ball, actually in the ball. So that is an elastic store of energy. Person running along. The energy in their chemical store is decreasing. Careful, you might have said kinetic, but that's not decreasing. They are moving, but in order to move, they're shifting energy from their chemical store. And energy can be stored. Uh, you could have had any of the different ways that we have mentioned today. So kinetic, chemical, magnetic only appears on the Edexcel specification, weirdly, not Cambridge. Gravitational potential, elastic, nuclear, or uh, electrostatic, if you happen to pick up on that, or thermal. Phew. That was a lot. I'll flip you back around. You okay with that? Elastic, chemical, and then just any of the choices. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna go over to my Facebook page and say hello to anyone who happens to be watching live. Um, if you are on Facebook, obviously not all of you are, that might be indeed why you are watching this on YouTube. Um, but if you are on Facebook, then I've got a Facebook group where I put free printouts of these lessons. It just goes on the board anyway. It's just like wherever I show you my screen and ask you a question, you, you can have that in front of you because uh, it helps some people if you download it from Facebook. But yeah, you're not missing anything. You haven't got the sheets. Uh, there's nothing extra there, if you know what I mean. So don't worry too much if you haven't got a printer. I never assumed that everyone's got a printer. Here we go, some comments on Facebook from people watching live. Uh, oh, hello, Bastion. You've done all three lessons. Are you kidding me? What? Blimey, you must be shattered. I am. You've done all three lessons. Amazing. Hiya. Uh, oh, Joeria, hello. Good to see you. You've done at least two, haven't you? Have you done three as well? Oh, hello, Heidi, who's watching right now. Oh, that's nice. E, Mohammed, and Zane, and Khaled from South Africa. Oh, that's so cool. Are you still in South Africa? Oh. When you stretch the elastic, is that not chemical energy from your body? Going into kinetic energy as you move it. <clears throat> Shayla, that is so good. And Ben being like, yeah, that's what I thought. Yes, excellent. So today we've only really talked about like the, the start and the end of the process. But next week we will do uh, flow diagrams when we look at what's happening in the middle. Because yes, you are quite right, obviously, when you stretch an elastic band. Yeah, you do make it move, don't you? But when you... But in order to do that stretch, you use, uh, it's a chemical store that's been emptied. And then in the end, you've got an elastic store. But yeah, you're quite right. Well done. There is stuff happening in the middle. All right, Ben. Hello, Chloe. Excellent. Chemical and elastic, says Jeremia. Uh Probably. <laughs> yes, I think so. If that's the answer to the last one. Oh, Tobias is here. Splendid. Uh, struggling to find you on the laptop. I'm here. I'm right here, Tobias. I hope you found me. Oh, well. If you didn't find me, then maybe you're here now. Hello, maybe you're watching on catch up. Thank you so much for joining me a lot. Um, if you would like to actually pay me for my job, you totally can. In fact, if people weren't, I couldn't do this job. It's just the best job ever. Um, so yeah, if you are enjoying these lessons, then, for, oh, I should say I'll put some homework eventually up in my Facebook group as well. There's a PDF in there where I stick like past paper questions that I think you should be able to answer now. And links to my favourite websites and YouTube channels that you can use uh, to sort of read up in your own time if some of this was a bit confusing. Uh, yeah, I will send you nice things. Although I don't... Right. If you go to my About section on YouTube, it takes you to this website called Coffee. And enough people have signed up on Coffee to support me with £5 per month. That This is now my job. It's working really well. Like, hopefully it's, it's quite good value for you as far as lessons are concerned. £5 a month for... You could do these and my all ages and even come to Lego Storytime shows like every week. So there's a lot going on for free and you even get the homework PDF and the printouts. But it's also good for me because there's loads of you watching. So just a small amount from everyone. It's working. I will send you. I don't know why I'm writing coffee theatre science. This is what you could Google or search on the Internet if you want to look it up later. Uh, yeah, I send you theatre science magazine. I'm very proud of it. And it's a very good time to sign up. So when you sign up. I send you a past issue of Theatre of Science magazine, which my husband graphically designs for me. It is Ace. Um, it's got like a choose your own adventure and a comic. If you do an ITCSE, there will, there will be lots in it that you don't know. Like I'm a science teacher and it's always new stuff to me. I research it pretty much from scratch. This has got this tale in it of um, how penicillin became a fantastic medicine and how it wasn't just down to one guy. Um, and there's a free biogradable plastic bag so you can grow your own mold. I know. Um, so 
yeah when you sign up i send you a welcome pack i'll send you this one a past magazine and like some diffraction glasses and a description of how they work which is quite useful for igcse um and then you get the next magazine like whenever i've written it but for t if you're watching live if you're watching our catch up like today or tomorrow then it counts for you too um if you sign up now, I'll send you that welcome pack like I usually do, but the next magazine is due out in like a couple of days. As soon as it arrives at my house, I'm gonna start posting it out. This is basically buy one, get one free until the new magazine arrives at my house. If you sign up today, I'll send you that. And then when the new magazine arrives, you'll be on the list and I'll send you the new magazine as well. Um, whereas like people who sign up after the new magazine arrives at my house, they'll just like get that one in their welcome pack, if you see what I mean. So hard sell, enthusiastic advert over, Thank you for listening. If you're thinking, yeah, this is totally worth five pounds a month. She deserves paying for her job. Uh, sign up now. Don't sign up in a week because that would be annoying for you. Right. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go find my shoes and then uh, do some other stuff. I'll see you back here next week where we, if you want to look it up in advance, we're doing Sankey diagrams and flow diagrams. I'm laughing because they're quite infamous, uh, but yeah, we'll have fun. I'll see you soon. Bye.